In Ready Math Lesson 11, we continue to build our understanding of working with three-digit numbers. In Lesson 10, we first explored those three-digit numbers, and now we're practicing reading and writing three-digit numbers. So in the Ready Math book, they're going to start to push us to use a what we call place value chart, where it breaks apart each piece of the place value, the ones, the tens, and the hundreds. And so we start by using that chart and thinking about if there are four groups of 100, four groups of 10, and four ones, then we start to think about what the value is. So the value of four groups of 100 or four hundreds is, of course, 400. Or we know that four groups of 10 equals 40, and then, of course, in the ones place, whatever the digit is, that is its value, so four. So let's look at the base 10 blocks down here. So again, remember that the big squares represent groups of 100. So we have 100, 200, 300. So I'm gonna fill in my place value chart with three groups of 100. And we look at our tens, I've got one, two, three, four groups of 10, and five, six ones. So those are the groups of each of our place value. Then we let's talk about, again, the value. So three groups of 100 is 100, 200, 300. Four groups of 10 is 10, 20, 30, 40. And then of course, our six ones is just worth six. But then once I know the value, that kind of puts it in that expanded form, and I can put it back together. I can read that number as 346, and again, I put it together into one three-digit number, 346. Now, I want to look at a few more examples on how to read and write numbers. So let's look at this example of base 10 blocks. Again, I see two groups of 100, three groups of 10, and then three ones. All right, so I could put a little H beside that. I could put a T beside that and a zero, which, or sorry, I'm... O, the letter O, which kind of makes it look like 30. So be careful if you're doing your place value without the place value chart. Okay. But so I know that there are two groups of 100, which is equal to 200, three groups of 10, which is equal to 30, and three ones. I put that all together. Again, I can just say it out loud. 233 gives me my three-digit number, 233. But in this lesson, they also have you explore regrouping and changing the way we look at some of these numbers. So I could take this two groups of 100, and I can think about that as groups of 10. So how many groups of 10 would be in these 200 blocks? So again, here's 10. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. I've got 10 groups of 10 here and 10 groups of 10 here. So that would be actually 20 tens. Let me fix my zero right there. It looks like some weird design. So that would be 20 tens plus three more tens. and then plus my three ones. So we could look at this in different ways, all right? So 200 is the same thing as looking at 20 tens. We'd actually have a total of 23 tens and three ones, all right? And that would still equal 233. Or we could think about how many ones are in this problem. Well, there's 100 ones, another 100 ones, so that's 200 ones. We've got 10, 20, 30 ones here, and three ones. So really, there would be 233 ones if we counted each one of those little blocks separately. 
All right, so we start to be a little bit more flexible with the way we see these three-digit numbers. And we know that there are groups of 10 inside these hundreds, or there are groups of one inside all of our three-digit numbers. And we can start to think about them a little bit more flexibly. So 200 or two groups of 10 is the same, or sorry, two groups of 100 is the same thing as 20 groups of 10. So for, again, if we looked at just 10s, I would have 23 tens and three ones, or 233, 233 ones, if we think about it just as ones.